everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars, and in this week's episode, it's an update on the Testarossa to Tesla Rossa. Let's get into it. Now, on our last update on this build, we offered up the battery boxes. They were empty, they weren't powder coated. It was just a case of showing you where they were gonna go. Well, now, most of them are in. So we got the front battery box in there. That's got 8.8 .8 kilowatt hours of battery in there. That's all bolted in. A high voltage is all coming out there. You can see the orange cables down here. And if we have a close up shot, we can show you some of the low voltage stuff that we've been doing down here. Now they say the devil is in the detail on builds like this, and they're right, but the time is in the wiring. And if I explain what I mean, just in this little area alone, we've got four Deutsch connectors, and they, ooh, I would say is about 80 pins in there. So that's 80 wires just coming into this area alone. And what sits on top of this then is our own fuse and relay box, if you like. The original fuse and relay box for the car is there. So that's the original Italian wiring. And I can hear people sighing, sighing out there, oh, Italian wiring. <laughs> um, but to be fair, it all worked. So uh, this is our system that we've added in here. And then down underneath is the vacuum pump. You've got a 12 volt battery in this area as well. Air conditioning system down there as well. So there's a lot going on just in this area alone. And as uh, I've said before, we build to an ECE R100 standard, which is kind of a, a safety standard for electric vehicles, if you like. And as part of that, I've just caught at my eye here, the inertia switch. Now, what is an inertia switch? Well, essentially, if we're unfortunate to be involved in a bump, if you like, then that inertia switch will then shut off the car and make it safe. So as well as replicating some of the features that were originally on the car, like the air conditioning system, now convert that to electric, we also have to add on certain safety features like that to comply with the EC R100 specification. So that's enough about the front. I think it's time to go in the rear. Right, now I'm sitting in the rear and Tim is still sniggering from me saying I'm going in the rear from before. But never mind, he's a small child and I'm very mature, aren't I, Tim? For now, for now. <laughs> for now, for now, indeed. So here we have the mid battery boxes and they sit where the original fuel tanks used to sit. So we've got one there, one there. That has two modules in, another two in there. And they are 10.4 kilowatt hours. In fact, I said 8.8 .8 before for the front one. That's 10.4 as well. So 10.4 in the front, 10.4 in the ear. So we've got 20.8 kilowatt hours of battery in the car so far. Yes, I can do maths. Yay. Um, we've also got the 7 kilowatt hour charger in here. And obviously the high voltage cables all routed through the car as well. And you'll also see these things here. This is the coolant system running through the battery pack as well. So you'll see these um, on the front pack. Uh, as well. So yeah, middle battery boxes are in place. The radiators are in. So we've got the radiator uh, behind my head here for the battery pack. So that's battery system coolant. And over the other side, exactly the same again, but that's the motor and inverter coolant system. And surrounding me here is the cradle, all ready to take the main big battery box, which is sitting here. And most importantly, the Tesla muscle that's going to be sitting here. So let's talk about the main battery pack. Now here we have the main big battery pack, if you like. This is going behind the seats, uh, nice and central. So weight distribution should be good for handling. And don't forget the other two battery packs are really, really low down in the car as well, which will also help for handling. But here is the main line share of not only the batteries, but also the high voltage brain, if you like of the system as well. So we've got a 41.6 kilowatt hour battery pack in here. So the total kilowatt hours of the car is 62 point something kilowatt hours. But also in here then we've got the contactors. So we've got two sets of contactors, one for the motor and the rest of the car and one for the CCS charging system. So that's what these things are here and all the bus bars that connect it all. But we've also got things like the uh, the fuses, obviously, we've got main fuses and ancillary fuses. Uh, we've got the main connectors coming in here. So these are the, uh, that's the CCS connector. That's off to the motor and that's off to the rest of the battery packs. Then you've got the secondary systems coming in here. So you've got the charger, the heater, uh, air conditioning system and the DC to DC converter in there. And this is then the safety disconnect or service disconnect, as they say. So... 
Yep, that's essentially what's in here. Or oh, you've got the pre-charge system in there, I can see as well. So there's a pre-charge contactor. And then the low voltage system as well is in here. So you've got the battery management system or the BMS down there. And then that's going to be coming out here where there's some Molex plugs and you can see them on the car. So I think Ben is just finalizing the low voltage system here and doing all the wiring to the Molex plugs over here. And in there, we've got the charge controller as well. So the CCS charge controller will go in here as well. And that's pretty much it. So it's quite busy, a lot going on in a small space. I think we've got probably about another, I'd say, a week's worth of work in here to get this finished. So although the car looks very unfinished, it's actually the final furlong for this build because we've done a dress rehearsal before, so we know everything fits. So it's just the final build up of the system and then that uh, plate down there will go off for powder coating and then it's lid on and battery pack in and then the final part of the jigsaw then will be the motor going in so let's have a look at that now here we have the muscle of the car if you like the performance tesla drive unit we'll put up the the specs of this on the screen but this is essentially going in the car so that this is towards the front of the car that's all the towards the rear of the car. That means we're keeping as much weight as we can between the axles, which will help with the handling of the car, if you like. And this is the cradle that then attaches to the existing infrastructure in the car and also the cradle that we already have in there, which bolts to the original engine mounts. Because don't forget, in the UK, we have to abide by the DVLA rules and regulations, which means you can't modify or alter the existing chassis or monocoque of the vehicle. So everything has to bolt into existing bolt holes and uh, mounting points. So this will be the last piece of the puzzle that goes in and this has been patiently waiting for some time. It's already been bench run so we know it's all good and commissioned. Uh, and that's about it on this. So hopefully next time you'll see this in the car. So the final thing I want to show you is inside the car. So let's have a look at that. Now this is where all the actions can be happening this coming week. Mike is going to be busy getting all this low voltage wiring and the spaghetti wiring in here all in. And it's not just things like buttons. You've got uh, obviously some control systems here. We've got the shifter, so that is forward, that is reverse. So we've kept that iconic Ferrari gated shifter and you've got the micro switches uh, uh, there and there for forward and reverse but we've also got control systems so we've got a button there for the ccs we've got a uh, air conditioning system all sorts of bits and pieces as well as the instrumentation because don't forget if we just simply put that ferrari instrumentation in it wouldn't really work because there's no engine for revs or motor temperature or engine temperatures i should say and oil pressure so some of this wiring will be going up to the instrumentation here but I think that's probably worth showing you as well because the instrumentation in this vehicle and a lot of others that we do looks exactly the same from the outside, but what's behind is completely different. So let's have a chat about that. Now, it's really important when we're converting these iconic classic cars to electric that we seamlessly integrate the electric drivetrain with the original vehicle such that from the outside, you don't even know it's electric. But when you drive it, the experience is better if you like as far as throttle response and regenerative braking and in a lot of ways handling as well and certainly performance but just as important as that is the instrumentation so we don't want you know massive huge touchscreen ipad type things in these classic vehicles we need to keep the instrumentation looking exactly the same just like the exterior looks exactly the same so we use a company called peterson electric vehicles uh, really clever bunch of guys, aerospace engineering background, and what we do is we send off the instrumentation to them, and what comes back is this. So this is a black box, this kind of translates the, the modern information from the motor and control system and the battery management system, and outputs the old school analog outputs that the Ferrari ga uh, gauges need to do their thing. But as well as that, they also repurpose and you know, revive some of the gauges as well. So what I mean by repurpose is you don't want RPM, if you like, of the engine. So they'll repurpose that to say power or kilowatts. 
you don't want oil pressure, for instance, and they'll repurpose that. In fact, on this one, they've changed it into a DNR switch, so it'll tell you if the uh, vehicle is in drive, neutral, or re reverse. So they'll repurpose the DARS, but the guts inside are all exactly the same, the analog inputs, if you like, that you need to drive those gauges are the same. So that's Pizza and EV. They do a lot of vehicles for us. Uh, we also use Speed Hut on some uh, cars as well, but uh, we're using a lot more Peterson EV stuff because, you know, this wouldn't really suit Speed Hut DARS. Some vehicles do, some vehicles don't. So that's instrumentation. Hopefully, the next time you see this instrumentation will be in the car, moving dials and a moving car. So hopefully, it'll be more or less Tesla Rossa and more Tesla Rossa on the next episode. So, question for you guys out there. What are the iconic classic supercars of yesteryear do you think would benefit from the ECC electric treatment? And do you necessarily agree with what we're doing? Because, you know, it's quite an emotive subject, especially when we start touching things like prancing horses and putting electric drive drain in. So, on that note, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you on the next one.